Not a tourist in sight. The canals of Venice without its famous gondolas. No sound of fans cheering in Milan's football stadium either, where five major matches have been postponed due to the coronavirus. As new infections climb dramatically in Europe's worst hit country, the Italian government is imposing more drastic measures. Quarantined areas are controlled by army checkpoints in some regions, and emergency aid has been promised to the sectors hit hardest by the rapid spread of the virus. In France, tourists gathered outside the world's most visited museum, the Louvre, in vain on Sunday. They were not allowed in the building after the museum staff voted to keep its doors shut due to the fears of contamination from the flow of tourists. I want to go to see the Mona Lisa, the, the painting, but unfortunately it's closed, so I'm a bit disappointed. The French government has banned gatherings of more than 5,000 people, closing down trade fairs and large sporting events. Even though a half marathon in Paris was officially called off, hundreds of runners defied the ban and ran the full course. I'd signed up to take part in the marathon, and since I had nothing to do this morning, I thought I might as well go and run. It was my goal, and if I can do it, why not? We have to stop all this paranoia with what's happening. We have to keep things in perspective. In recent days, the US, Australia and Thailand have reported the first deaths on their soil. But with more than 50 deaths, Iran has the world's highest toll outside of China. The epidemic is impacting businesses and daily life and shaking the country's already struggling economy. People are panicked a little, and the stress has led to a drop in sales. People have also become more hygiene-obsessed and buy less food from bakeries, restaurants and caterers. As markets around the globe take a hit, some countries are more vulnerable than others.